Let's let's do a continuation now. <sighs> We're gonna make Taco Goat not lonely. Another router. Grab another micro tick here, and I'm going to uh, add another one. And before we activate this router, let's label it. So my cat is losing her mind. There we go. And now let's connect these two. Disco Weasel to Taco Goat. We go port five. There we go. And I'm just going to. There we go. So here's Disco Weasel. So now we should be able to bring t Disco Weasel online. Start. All right, so now this guy's online and all, but we should, won't be able to really access it through here. So we're gonna have to actually get into it. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, where is this hex P? Oh, that's one of mine. Never mind about that. All right, so here we go. So let me just, uh, we're just gonna hop onto this router here as soon as it comes online. I'm gonna wait for it to boot up. <laughs> I'm so tired. Let's double check and make sure that I booted this guy up. It is started. Let's pull up the uh, console on this and see what shows up. Okay, cool. So that one's up. Okay, so refresh. Not sure why I'm not seeing it. Uh, drugs. Oh, here we go. Let's just do this. Oh, you know what? I remember now because I put a firewall on it. I'm gonna have to, and I of course enabled the uh, neighbor rules so that I can't see it. So let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna log into it just quickly. And I am going to go IP firewall, or actually I'm going to go into IP neighbors, okay, and let's print this. What do we got here? And I'm going to hit this, and uh, yeah, okay, we look good. Okay, yeah, what's the IP address for this guy? Let's print it. Here we go, so it's uh, 192.168.255.94. Oh, I locked myself out, that's right. Okay, well, let's do this. We're gonna go into IP, and we're gonna go into firewall, and filter, and print. It should show us everything. And there's all, all of our rules, and we're gonna disable, uh, let's see here. I wanna disable the 15, 16, and 17. There, oops. There we go. Okay, so let's fix that. There we go, now I'm in. Okay, so we've got Taco Goat, you know, up and running. Okay, so while I'm in here, I should probably show you something else. Um, I can go IP neighbor print and uh, let's see here. Ether 5, 10.80.1.254. Okay, so watch this. Um, I'm actually gonna close this because I'm gonna do it from here. So we're gonna do uh, a point to point OSPF on this configuration here now. So I can go IP neighbors. Okay, like so, and there's the router, you can see it. And I'm going to Mac Telnet into it. And we're gonna enable Roman by doing this. Dual. Roman set enable yes right okay so I now have Roman set up on okay and we are going to do these two routers side by side so now I should be able to connect to this guy using Roman like so and it should show me the neighboring router which is this guy here and we're going to log into it isn't that neat so there's a quick demonstration of Roman like I said what Roman allows you to do is it allows layer 2 management functionality across your Microtex so we're gonna make these two routers work together with OSPF yay how much uh, time did it burn there five minutes I'm sure that uh, you yeah will edit out a bunch of that garbage because that was just a bunch of uh, me screwing around with stuff unless you really do want to see it I don't know that's up to you fast forward whatever so first of all we need to come up with a point to point for these two okay um, so I did show you my network mapping I prefer to use 200 so I'm gonna go 10.80.200.1 slash 29 and we are gonna put that on Ethernet 5 which is the interface Let's see here okay there we go okay so that's the interface that this guy connects to. And then on this side here, where is it? Point to point, here. I'm gonna go over to this side and I'm gonna add this over here now, okay? So we're gonna put this on ethernet one. And remember, I need to fix that IP address so it's the second IP in this. Put that on one, uh, point to point, two, goat. All right. So we've got that guy in place here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna label this interface. So we're gonna call it ETH1. Um, goat, like so, right? And on this one here, we're gonna take five and ETH five weasel, okay? Simple as that. So now that we've got our basic IP connectivity in here, we need to break the bridge because as you saw earlier, port five's in the bridge here and it will not work with OSPF if that's in the bridge. So that has to go. Okay, so now we need to do our configuration on here. So for the sake of uh, simplicity to get you up and running, we need to, uh, of course, do a basic config on here. So we're gonna add our loop back, okay? 
And once again, disable the spanning tree on the loop back. Okay, we're gonna make our management bridge. And we're gonna make our last file. There we go. And you know what? I remembered what I forgot to do in the basic router tutorial video. How to use the management bridge. Let me show you. So I'm gonna go into interfaces here, right? And I'm gonna create a VLAN. You can do that two ways. You can go here, or you can just be a lazy ass like me and do it from here. I'm clicking the drop down going VLAN. And I'm gonna arbitrarily go 1001, because that's a VLAN that I'm not going to use uh, on a, for a switch. And I'm gonna go VL1001 management. And I'm gonna attach that in this instance here to the last mile bridge, okay? What that's going to do now is that anything within the last mile bridge will be able to access that VLAN. Now, remember we're working in routers by the way, folks. So now I'm gonna go into this bridge and now I need to add that VLAN to the, I'm untagging it right now in management like so. There we go. So now any equipment that you stick in the last mile, any equipment that you stick in the last mile, you can enable a management VLAN on it so that it's no longer part of the same broadcast domain as the customer traffic protecting your stuff. You know, remember how I explained that in my last mile isolation video? Okay, so that's the piece that I forgot in the previous video. All right, going back over here now because we're trying to stay on topic and my broken, frustrated ADHD mind has a hard time with that. Um, okay, so we've got our point to point up. We've got our IP addresses in place, okay? We need to put the router ID for this router on here. We're gonna make it router designation number two. So 10.80.255.2, like so, right? This is gonna be our router ID. All right. And we're gonna stick that on the loopback interface, like so. And now that we've got that, I'm gonna copy that, and we're gonna prep up our OSPF. So I need my IP addresses over here as a reference point, okay? We're gonna go into routing OSPF, and I'm going to add this network first. And then I'm gonna add the other one. Now I can cheat here, see this? Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna copy, 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 copy. I'm gonna paste this in here. We know it's a slash 29, so I'm gonna put slash 29 in there, just like that. Cool, so we've got the loopback and we've got the point to point, which are the two that are very important right now, okay? So now I'm gonna go to the instance and prep the instance, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna paste the router ID. I'm gonna, fuck you, there. And remember how we said that we only want to enable these on the uh, other routers? So now I'm gonna to explain to you what these guys do in a little bit of detail. Uh, redistribute connected routes means that, um, let me demonstrate. See how it says uh, dynamic active connected? All these IP addresses, all these connected routes are present on interfaces in this router. So see all these IPs? These are on interfaces within the router itself, which means that they are now considered connected routes within the routing table, because the router itself is gonna advertise or populate its routing table with the IPs that are present on itself, okay? So if you enable redistribute connected routes, it will now advertise connected routes across the network. And if you have any static routes, like something running across a VPN or something like that, it will also distribute it, okay? So I like to enable that on the routers, okay? because then you don't have to manually enter the routes into the routing table unless you specific, or into the network section unless you specifically need to. So this is now set up. And just to reiterate over here, routing, OSPF, we're gonna go to the instance and look at this one now. Do you see the differences? See how I don't have redistribute default route on here? That's because this is a site router. This is not a border router. This is a, well, you know, the terminology is kind of messed up. Um, I consider anything that's downstream of the border to be uh, typically edge if it's on the edge of the network or core if it's inside of the middle of the network. So if this one's going to be a tower site, you can consider it a core router and this one's considered a border router. So this one we are distributing the default route because we want to tell all the other routers in the network where the default route is, okay? So this one here it doesn't have to share its default route because automatically that's already being advertised across the network by the, this router right here. So just for the sake of cleanliness and whatnot, we just do this, okay? Now over here, you're gonna see that the interface has popped up dynamically, right? So I'm gonna double click on that, oh, sorry. Let me do the DP on loop back here first, watch. Now I'm gonna make this one static as well, copy, except I'm gonna change a detail. This is point to point, which we're doing point to point OSPF right now in this demonstration. Um, I'm gonna leave all the parameters default in here and I'll explain to you how they work once we actually do a uh, multiple, like a multiple OSPF site example, okay? So I'm gonna hit okay here. The dynamic entry goes away. 
Now I need to go over here and I need to add this subnet in here. Okay, so 10.80.200.0 slash 29 clears mud, right? I'm gonna put a comment on this, point to point to disco. There we go. And this one is the uh, loopback, like so. Cool. And let's do the same thing over here. Comment. And then on this one here, we are going to make this one. Uh, this will be point to point. All right, so there we go. So now we've got our point to point interface set up on this guy, but it's not set up over here yet. All right, so we're gonna go over here and you'll see that it's dynamically added this now, right? So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna change this one to its appropriate setting, which is point to point. So now these guys will establish after about 10 seconds. It's the hello time. And once they establish, you should see the routes populate in the routing table here as O. Okay, I'll take a second or so. Now while that one's prepping, there you go. You see there's a dynamic, there's the loopback IP right there. Now I'm gonna actually start programming some uh, routes on this guy, but just a quick overview. There, take a look at that, take a look at that, huh? Let's add the um, last mile uh, subnets now. So we're gonna go uh, 10.80.2.1 slash 24. And this is going to be for our management. Okay, and that will populate over here momentarily, see? Now we're gonna add the client subnets. So uh, 100.80.2.1 slash 24, because this is tower two. So we're making the third octet two, last mile, and then cx-net, and that will populate over here too, see? Dynamic active OSPF, right? Okay, so that's all in there now. Okay, I already showed you guys how to do a basic router config, so I don't necessarily need to go into depth on uh, setting all these guys up now that way. But um, now that you've seen the OSPF, let's do another OSPF link. So Disco Weasel, let's add a, another router in here. Okay, we're gonna call this one, uh, what's a clever name? Uh, in honor of my mom. There you go. Five ports, okay. So we've got Flatulent Cow here, and we're gonna stick that one right there. And you know what, Sh shits and gigs, let's add another one. This one'll be in honor of my father. There we go, cool. There you go. Hey mom, dad, if you ever watch my YouTube videos, or you're still alive, <laughs> there you go. All right, so let's just verify this. Okay, so we've got our five ports. So now let's connect these guys up so we can actually do stuff with them. All right, so we're gonna go one from here off of five on this guy here. See how easy I did that, by the way? And then we're gonna go uh, one from this one to four on here. And you know what? Let's make this one into uh, a, a triangle. So we'll go five to five, just for shits and giggles, okay? Let's start these guys up now. All right, so while those guys are booting up and see the little topology that we have going on here, I'm just going, going to console into this one just directly, because why not? What did I eat? All right, so admin, we go, yes, quit. Okay, now let's uh, label this one. So I'm gonna type system, identity, set, name, and we're gonna call this one flatulent, cow. Cool, okay, so that one's done. Now let's uh, enable Roman. So tools, uh, Roman, set, Enable equals yes. So that one's prepped. Now let's do derpy drunk. Come on, derpy drunk. You can do it. You still have some brain cells left. I'm sure you're functional. There we go. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So now let's label this one. System identity uh, set name. See, I'm heading tab to auto correct. You can't really see my finger work, but I'm auto uh, completing, right? That's kind of cool. Okay. Set name equals derpy drunk. And now let's enable Roman. Tools. Roman. Set. Enabled. Equals yes. Cool. So now all these guys are prepped. So now I should be able to log into these guys and do some stuff. <coughs> see how they all showed up now? All right. So let's bring up our flatulent cow. And we will stick flatulent cow over here, which is the downstream router. And then I'm going to grab the... Uh, Disco Weasel, which I believe is right here. Yeah, this one's Disco Weasel. Here we go. So I'm gonna set the identity on here, by the way. System, identity, go, weasel. There we go. All right, so Disco Weasel, let's see here. So we know that port five on Disco Weasel connects to port one on Flatulent Cow. And we should be able to see that by going to IP Neighbors. This is a cool thing about prepping OSPF. Okay, so if I go to IP Neighbors, I can see what interface what is on. See, isn't that cool? All right, so I'm gonna go to Ethernet 4 and I'm gonna label that one now. So ETH, Ethernet 4 is derpy drunk. Cool, and now for five, let's go on five here. What's on five? It's flatulent cow, cool. <clears throat> here we go, ETH 5, uh, flat cow. 
There we go. So now we've got everything labeled here. Now let's go over to Flatulent Cow for a second and go to uh, IP Neighbors and see what's all on its ports. Well, we've got a Disco Weasel on port one. So, eighth one, Disco Weasel, right. And Ethernet 5 is, what did we say again? Flatulent Cow? Nope, uh, IP Neighbors. Here we go. Oh yeah, it's Derpy Drunk. Derpy Drunk. There we go. Isn't that clever? Okay, so now that we've got that all prepped up on our interfaces and things like that, um, let's prep up the flatulent cow. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to the bridge again and we're gonna create our three interfaces, right? All right, loop back, STP, cool. Let's create our management, and event, and let's create our customer. The customer's hanging out, okay? All right, very cool. Okay, so we've got those guys. Let's get some IPs going. Watch me move. Okay, so we're gonna designate this router number three, okay? So 10.80.255.3. We're gonna stick that on our loopback interface. Bam. And this is gonna be a loopback, or router ID, sorry. Okay, and I'm not gonna do the full router configuration on these guys, by the way, like DHCP and stuff, because that's not necessary for this part of the demonstration. So 10.80.3, because this is uh, tower number three, uh, dot one slash 24 is going to go onto the management. Uh, management, okay. And we're gonna add our customer, 100.80.3.1 uh, uh, slash 24. Cool, and that's gonna go on last mile, comment, CXNet, like so. Cool. And now, watch the routing table here. I'm gonna bring that up again. IP routes. And you're gonna see, every time I bring a link online, the routing table will actually populate, which is pretty cool, eh? Okay, so that's all in place now, okay? So let's go into the instances for OSPF here. Okay, so first of all, let's add 100, or sorry, 10.80.255.3, and that's the loopback. It's easier to label things as you're doing them at first. Remember that, because later on when you've got a fucking nightmare of a network that you have to untangle and nothing's labeled, you'll be wanting to murder somebody. Okay, type one, type one. There we go, cool, it is running. So now we know that uh, we've got a slash 29 as our point to point over here from uh, Disco Weasel back to Goat. The ne next uh, subnet will be dot eight, which means our next usable is dot nine. So let's create an IP address for our point to point here, okay? Okay, so uh, see zero and then it'll be eight and then 16 and 24 because we're using slash 29 which jumps by eights, six usable. All right, so let's do this. 10.80.200.9 slash 29. Now watch what happens when I add, we're going to flat cow. When I hit apply, see how it populates the subnet for you? And then it, of course it populates in the routing table. Neat, eh? See, this is why you have to make the microtech work for you. Don't do unnecessary work, all right? So we're gonna call this one uh, flatulent cow. Cool, all right, so we've got those guys there. Hey phone, why don't you die in a fire? Um, I'm gonna read my fingerprint, you piece of dog shit. There, muted, all right. <clears throat> By the way, if anybody knows how to make a uh, screensaver that rains raccoons and goats and other farm livestock, I would love to have that going while I'm doing programming. It'd be kind of cool. Okay, so back to the programming. So we've got our subnet here now for our point to point. See? So we're going to add that. I'm going to take the net mask here and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go into the OSPF routing, OSPF, and I'm going to add that as yet another network, right? Now remember, we need to add the CIDR because it is a slash 29 and this is. Flat, you lent, how? Okay, all right, so now let's go to this side and let's add our IP address for that. Okay, so that is going to be 10.80.200.10, right? Slash 29, cool. And that's gonna go on Disco Weasel. And that's our um, Disco. There we go, and we've got that in place now too. And now let's go into our OSPF. Ba -ba -bum. We're gonna add this now, yay. See that? Okay, slash 29, and that's gonna be Weasel. And so now our instance is going to try to come up dynamically. See that? So for all intents and purposes, this is now working, but I wanna make this a point to point. So I'm gonna go copy and I'm gonna make that point to point. There we go. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Copy, point to point, okay. And our loopback, we wanna make that one a static interface, right? Okay, so now as the OSPF um, initiates, I guess you could say, um, there you go, it's gonna start populating the routing table over here so that all the subnets present on this guy are gonna show up over here, see? All right, so now we've got some OSPF happening. Isn't that cool? So now we actually have three sites going, but what's that you say? 
That's not enough? Well, since this router here at Disco Weasel uh, has the ability to see Flatulent Cow and Derpy Weasel, let's add the next one. Okay, so let's go from um, Disco Weasel to uh, Derpy Drunk. All right, so what's the next one? We've got eight. So we're gonna jump to 16 now, which will be 17 is the first usable. So 10.80.200.17 slash 29. And that's going to be going to Derpy Drunk. There we go, we've got that one in place. Let's put that in the routing table or into the um, uh, the OSPF networks here. Slash 29. There we go. And while I'm doing this now, I'm just gonna take the second to actually make this one into a proper point to point two. Cool, eh? There we go. So that's prepped. And now, on this side here, because we know that the next usable is gonna be 24, we're gonna use 25. And how do I know it's gonna be 24? Do you not see the pattern with your dumb eyes? Look, my monkeys. See? Huh? Huh? Zero, eight, 16. Right. And no, you're not dumb, you're beautiful. I'm just being silly, because we're all just a bunch of stupid upper eight apes, really. People think that demons are intelligent. We're not really that intelligent. We just think we're, it's kind of an ego thing. We're, we're literally primates that have figured out ways to make electrons do the things that we want them to do. So don't, don't feel so high and mighty about yourself being a bipedal primate. It's not a very impressive thing, really, in the grander scheme of things. So there's that. All right, so going over here, uh, 10.80.200. Uh, we said 24, so we're gonna be 25 slash 29. And this is going to be, uh, let's see here, derpy, drunk, Point to point, there we go. Cool, uh, where do I stick that now? I want that to be on Derby Drunk. Go, so that's in place now. So now I'm gonna take this subnet and I'm gonna prep it. See how it just kind of falls into place as you start doing it? It's really neat. And by the way, there are a couple of ways to do um, OSPF with Microtech. This is just one of them. Because one of the other ways is that you can take all the subnets that you want advertised across your network and you can go into your OSPF and put them in this area here. I'm more of the type of person that likes to only put the um, point to points and loopbacks in here and then let the instance itself advertise the rest of the subnets automatically for me because then you don't have to keep track of things as easily. Now if there's specific you know, caveats that you're doing to your routing, um, you can actually enable route filtering as well through here and say that I don't want that we can do chain OSPF out as example, and we can stop 127.0.0.1 um, or, you know, zero, and then do like, uh, see here, um, 30 through 32. So we can stop that one from being advertised throughout the network uh, simply by putting a filter rule in place for it. Now that's a little bit more advanced with OSPF. This is just a basic OSPF tutorial to teach you how to get your OSPF working. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my derpy drunk and I'm gonna double click, go copy, go point to point. There we go, cool, eh? You see how it just clicks into place? It's kind of neat. So now that we've got all these guys in place, this is kind of my canary right here so that we can see the uh, routing table populate. Let us make this a little bit smaller. Here we go. And I'm gonna move um, this guy. I'm just gonna get rid of the uh, flatulent cow for a second here. And we're gonna bring up the derpy drunk. Cool. There we go. Okay, so we've got this guy up now. So let's do the same thing now. So we've got derpy drunk. Let's create our interfaces because the interfaces is kind of the foundation of what we're doing here. All right, loop back. Remove spanning tree from the loopback interface. All right, uh, I'm sensing that somebody is wondering um, why I'm doing that. Because realistically, um, there's no reason why you necessarily have to remove spanning tree from the last, or from the loopback. But you know what? Just in case something glitches in the firmware, I'd rather not have that there. Because uh, MicroTix have been known to have some glitches with spanning tree, especially if you don't set it up properly. Okay, now let's add our IP addresses here. Okay, so this is going to be router number four. So 10.80.255.4. And we're going to stick that on the last mile here. Or nope, loop back. Ha, you caught me. Uh, router ID. Now we're going to add the management. 10.80. Uh, this is router 4.1 slash 24. Okay, that's going to go on to the management. Ugh. 10.80. 80.4.1 slash 24. There we go. Now we're going to add the customer, which is 100.80. Uh, 100.80.4.1 slash 24. That's going to go on last mile. Comment CXNet. CX stands for customer. Okay. So there's those guys. 
Now we need to create the point-to-point uh, -point interfaces on Derpy Drunk. So let's go um, IP neighbors. And this is the other cool thing. You're going to see this now. I love this. IP neighbors. This will show you the IP addresses that are present there. Neat, eh? So let's add 10.80.200.18 slash 29. And that's going to go on Ether1. And this is going to be uh, what's on Ether1 as well. Disco. All right, now for five, Flatulent Cow. All right, let's give Flatulent Cow an IP. 10.80.200.26 slash 29. And that's going to go on Ether5. And we're going to call that one Flatulent Cow. Cool. In honor of my mother. And let's see here. Um, one, we're going to relabel now because we know that one is Disco Weasel. We're just going to pull up the interfaces here. There we go. Okay, and five is Flat Cow. Cool. All right, so that stuff's all in place now, right? Let's do the next step. We've got our IP addresses. We've got our interfaces. Let's bring up the OSPF now and add our subnets that we need to make this work, okay? And what's going to be really cool, I'm going to pull up the uh, routing interface, or the routing table here for you. Watch as everything starts to pop into place. And by the way, you're going to see ECMP uh, occur um, you're going to see the ECMP occur here as soon as I add these subnets, so one second, it's just one second. Alright, so let's add our subnets now. Okay, so first of all, we've got 10.80.255.4, okay, comment, router, ID, okay, here's the next one. Okay, this is going to be the point-to-point -point for the, uh, flat weasel, or flat cow, sorry. So, um, 10.80.200.24. Slash 29. Okay, and that is flat cow. Here we go. All right, so now we just need to add our disco weasel. Yay! What if I, I'm going to try something here. Oh, look. I can also copy that. Let's see if that works, actually. It does. Okay, so it's disco weasel. Cool. All right, so those guys are all in place. And now you see how they're kind of working? Let's take that from double penetration to uh, passive. Okay, and flat cow, let's make that one point to point. And let's do the same with disco. Here we go. Now you see the routing table's populating now, right? Isn't that cool? So now we've got convergence, and all these sites are talking to each other, and you can see that the routing tables have uh, populated across the network, okay? So we've got 18 entries in here, we've got about uh, 16 entries in here. Uh, let me bring up uh, another router. Oh, we got that one. Here we go. Let's bring this guy up for a second and take a look at it. There we go. 16 in here. Neat, eh? Okay, and just double check this instance. Oh, that's right. Did you see what I didn't do there? The instance is broken. I didn't do it properly. 10.80.255.4. And we're going to call this one Derpy. Drunk. And we are going to redistribute our connected routes as type 1. By the way, do you see how I caught that? 18 in the routing table here and only 16 over there. Watch. Pow. Now the routing table will update across the network. See, this one's dropped its OSPF convergence for the moment. And uh, in 10 seconds when it comes back up, all the routing tables are matched across the network now. Including your default route right here. That's a really clean and clever way of setting up OSPF. Okay, so now that is the basic OSPF demo. Okay, so I shall chop, stop the video here because that's a solid 30 minutes. I'm trying to make them into digestible tr uh, chunks. Uh, I will then continue recording in just a moment and I'll show you guys a demonstration on ECMP and uh, um, cost and whatnot. But um, before we do that, there's one other thing that I really should show you, okay? So, see these? This is where you control this is where you control your OSPF stuff, okay? Now, we've got a link here, right? I need to explain the hello intervals and all this sort of stuff. So, the hello interval is how long it takes before it initiates the session. In this case here, it's going to count to 10 before it actually activates the session. Uh, now, and that's the session between the next device that's running OSPF is a peer to this. The router dead interval is how long it takes before it drops the session. So this one will count to 40 before it drops a se uh, session. Now, typically, if your network's stable and it's set up properly, 
uh, these shouldn't make too much of a difference until you start getting into some more complex settings. Uh, in fact, I believe that this is also a pretty default setting for a lot of devices. Um, now, where I would adjust this is if you've got failover, and we will be doing failover routing in another video, okay? That's going to be the next one, and I will demonstrate that for you. But this is 10 seconds before it activates the session. This is 40 seconds before it kills the session. Now, network type, point to point. Point to point literally means just that. That's when you're going from one router to another router. Uh, broadcast is kind of where you can literally put a bunch of these guys on the same bridge, and... Uh, it does some weird wonky shit. I don't like doing it that way personally, but uh, we can get into broadcast OSPF. It allows them all to essentially point to multipoint, right? Which is there as well, as you can see. And then you've also got NBMA. Uh, and with NBMA, it's kind of the same as broadcast, but without a broadcast domain. It's a point to multipoint without broadcast traffic, basically. Uh, it's only layer three instead of layer two, but correct me if I'm wrong on that, okay? I am tired. Um. Okay, so that is the basic OSPF setup. And let's go back over here for a second. See, we've got these routers all talking over OSPF and plus as an added bonus, look at Roman here. I can connect to one of these routers and be able to connect to all of them using Roman. Watch, disconnect. They aren't there anymore. They're gone, right? But if I connect to Roman on this, Oh, sorry, I'm also not dis displaying. Let me go over here for a second. Oh, I think it's this one here. Taco Go, IP Neighbors, Discovery Settings. We are going to let this be discovered on everything, like so, so that I can see it again in Winbox. There we go. Refresh, Taco Go. So I can click on Taco Go's IP or MAC address, go connect to Roman. There we go. No, Taco Go, connect to Roman, see? And even without being able to touch the other routers through IP, using Roman, they all intercommunicate uh, between each other, and then you can do this. Ha! So now we can, like, interconnect stuff. It works great. Um, so there you go. That's the uh, basic OSPF video. Okay, I hope that that makes sense. And uh, in the next video in the OSPF series, I'm going to explain to you, using this exact configuration of four routers, um, ECMP and... Uh, uh, point to point failover with redundant links which means that uh, yeah we're gonna be showing you guys how to send traffic one way or set up uh, redundant links for you okay so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed if you do please support me on PayPal or patreon um, yeah the videos do actually cost us money to make and uh, it every little cent helps so I've got a link to the patreon in the description below uh, and there's also the Misfixit Facebook group if you want to get on there. And Patreon uh, patrons will also have access to directly reach me through Patreon. Um, you also have early access to footage, live streams, and other fun stuff. I'm trying to think of everything which I can do to make the Patreon also a little bit more uh, rewarding. But, uh, I mean, you got the YouTube channel. I'm making you guys uh, tutorials on how to do things. So I'm hoping that's rewarding enough to help feed me. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh... Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. We'll catch you later.